I'd forgotten momentarily. Were you were you with the Democrat or the Gazette at first? Uh, I was with the Democrat. The Demo- you know, the Gazette when I started back in eighty one was you know much more established, and the Democrat was willing to take chances on on younger guys like like me, and you know give us some good beats like the Razorbacks. Uh, all right, so I mean, we'll get into the Traylon Burks and some bowl stuff uh, with you in a moment, but I had to ask about this. Drew introduced me to this website called collegepolltracker.com, and this tracks every writer's vote. Uh, you know, all the you know, you do a top twenty-five on a week-by-week basis. You 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 are uh, you're one of the AP voters, so I can see your most recent vote that came out December sixth. You got Purdue, Baylor, Duke, UCL, UCLA, Gonzaga, Villanova. Hogs are seventh. Um, I wonder what what is the what process do you go through? I'd have trouble like figuring out a top twenty five. I can't decide where I want to eat for dinner on a day by day basis. So how do you do this? What what sort of process do you have? Well, it's not easy, especially in basketball where you play so many more games. It's not easy in football either. When you know uh, this team beats that team, you know team A beats B, team B, and then. B beats C, and then C beats A, and you're like, well, where should I rank these teams? But it's not easy. Uh, you know, Sunday night, uh, the AP sends us uh, how they fared that week with, with the current poll, and you can see, you know, a lot of times you know, like, you know, Alabama beat Gonzaga, but you may not know. It's hard to keep track of, you know, maybe 40 teams that you might be considering voting for. And uh, that comes out on around 10. But I spent a couple hours on it Sunday night. I go through... Uh, teams I'm considering and kind of look at their schedules. You think about strength of schedule, who they beat, where they beat them. You know, was it a, a good win or, or is it called that good loss if they lost to a good team on the road? Like, um, you know, Duke losing to Ohio State, even though they, they blew, blew a big lead. I don't know. I would say that quote a good loss. But it, it's, um, it's tough to do, especially when you have, Gonzaga beating UCLA, but then Duke beating Gonzaga and Ohio State beating Duke and all this other stuff. Um, it's definitely not, you know, scientific. And, you know, uh, if people were critical of how I voted, I certainly could understand that. I would challenge them to do it. A, one time, oh, a couple of years ago, I got an email from somebody. I can't remember what team they was their, quote, team, but they were mad that I wasn't voting for them and stuff. And I just replied that... Um, um, you know, if they wanted to send me uh, their poll between, you know, 10 and midnight on a Sunday night, I, I made no promises other than I would look at it, take it into consideration. And, um, you know, and I never heard from them again. Um, my, my point was, you know, this isn't easy. It, it takes quite a bit of, of work, you know, if you're doing it right. And, it, it, you know, and you can you can mess up and maybe leave a team out by mistake. You know, you're moving people around. It, it, it's not easy, and I'm glad it isn't part of the NCAA tournament selection process. I can tell you that. Yeah, I got to be honest here. I, I – I, it's nothing I'd ever want to do. I, you know, and it, it's probably a badge of honor that you guys wear when you vote. You know, each year, but it's nothing that I'd, I'd ever really want to want to have as one of my responsibilities. So you got Arkansas ranked seventh. That's probably the highest of anybody. Uh, no, actually, there's a writer that's got him ranked fifth, and you've got them Arkansas ranked ahead of any other SEC team. So you know, I, I, what is it that you think other writers are missing right now uh, that you've got Arkansas ranked? Uh, five spots ahead of where the the rest of the AP is generalized on them. Well, I, I don't know if anybody's missing anything. If a guy was ranked in Arkansas, you know, 17th, I wouldn't be critical of him. But um, And I know Arkansas, you know, the, the knock on them would be their schedule isn't as tough as some other teams have been, and they haven't been beating everybody by 30. You know, UAR comes in here pretty beat up and plays Arkansas tough. They pull away and win by 15. But um, to me, being undefeated counts for a lot, you know. And um, Arkansas is now the only um, undefeated team in the league. Like I said, obviously Alabama's got a better win beating Gonzaga in, in Seattle. But I just don't believe in dropping a team if they're winning, you know. And I think I had Arkansas tenth or something. I just kind of gradually moved them up. So uh, I know OU's not ranked, but if they could beat OU on Saturday a neutral site, that that'd be a big deal. But um, I obviously don't see all these other teams as much as I see Arkansas. But I think Arkansas's got a pretty high ceiling with all these newcomers. In fact, they haven't been shooting particularly well outside. They're obviously shooting real well inside, getting the free throw line. But, I, yeah, I've just kind of gradually moved them up as other teams have lost because I, I know they dropped from 
10 to 12 in the AP poll last week. And, um, you know, that, that's fine. Uh, you know, Alabama obviously moved ahead of them, but I just don't, I just don't really like dropping a team as long as they're winning if I've got them in a certain spot. So, Bob, this is more, you know, tongue-in-cheek. I'm, I'm obviously just messing with you here type of question, but I don't know if you've been to College Poll Tracker. They do track, you know, how you vote over the years and kind of which way you lean, and it says that you have a bias against two teams, and apparently you show have shown a bias over, over a long period of time against Utah State and against Memphis. So so what do you have against Utah State and Memphis, apparently? you talking about in basketball? Yeah. Um, well, I had Memphis high. And they've had some really bad losses. I mean, losing to Georgia, um, who's you know lost practically everybody in the transfer portal. I mean, to me, that's a really bad loss. No, it is. And they lost to somebody else. Utah State, um, just off the top of my head, I'd probably say that maybe their strength of schedule. I mean, they've got a quality program, but um, you know, the, I don't know how many you know Power Five teams they play, and so I, I did. I was not aware I had a bias, but I'd say. Memphis, I, don't, I mean, they're they're not having a very good. I mean, I, I think Memphis has been overrated the last couple of years. Penny Hardaway has really recruited well, but last year they started off pretty high and, and you know had a so so mm-hmm. season. Of course, COVID affected teams, and then this year, I think I had them in my top fifteen. And then they're they've had some, some not just losses, but I would call them bad losses. I mean, losing to Georgia, even though the game was at Georgia. I mean that I would say any SEC team that loses to Georgia this year and I'm not sure Georgia wins some games in the league, but you know, Georgia is just not a very mm-hmm. good team right now, I don't think. No, Bob, I I 100% agree with you. I was just, just, like I said, a little tongue-in-cheek, just kind of messing with you since it does pop up on on your profile on college poll tracker. On on to football, though, and the biggest news of the day and something that will probably be talked about up until kickoff on New Year's Day of of the Outback Bowl is Traylon Burks' decision to opt out of the bowl game, go ahead and enter into the (coughs) NFL draft. What, what what are your thoughts on it? Were, were you a little surprised, or did you kind of expect this move to come? Uh, I certainly wasn't shocked. Um, I, I think he's doing the right thing. I think anybody that's critical of Traylon Burks for opting out to protect his NFL future, I think, you know, if they think he's being selfish, I'd say they're being selfish thinking that way. Um, you know, the Outback Bowl is a big deal. It's especially a big deal for a program like Arkansas that hadn't been in a New Year's Day bowl game since the 2011 season when, when they beat Kansas State in the Cotton Bowl. But, um, you know, I, I don't know exactly where he's going to be picked. Obviously, that's going to depend on, you know, assuming he goes to the combine, how he does there, how he does in workouts, you know, pro day, interviews, all these things. So sometimes these NFL teams can find out a guy fractured some bone when he was five years old or something, you know. And uh, so they go over these uh, these uh, draft guys, you know, the, 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 the high – the high projected guys, you know, every every which way you can imagine, you know, uh, background checks like FBI mm-hmm. type background checks or whatever. But um, you know, it, it, assuming he's going to be a, a mid first round pick, even a late first round pick, I'm guessing his rookie contract will be somewhere between fifteen twenty million dollars with a signing bonus off the top of my head, and you know, that's that's not just life changing money for him and his immediate family. That's that's generational wealth that'll probably affect his kids, grandkids, great grandkids, all that. So um it, it yeah, I don't think it's asking you know, I, th- I think it's logical for whether it's Burks or anybody, um, to opt out and protect that future. I mean this is a guy that's played really well for all stuff for three years. I mean, there's obviously the thing is they're not going to the outback ball without it. I think that's safe mm-hmm. to say. He helped get him there. But um, can you imagine if he got hurt in that bowl game? I mean, um, it's not for the national title. Also, I think another way to look at these things, you know, because players obviously are opting out. I'm waiting for the first guy to maybe opt out of a playoff game because I wonder if that's going to come. If a guy's like the number one overall pick, you know, I mean, I don't know. That that may not ever happen, but it would just shock me. But, um, you know, I think coaches should look at these, and coaches, by the way, are opting out of bowls too. You know, left mm-hmm. and right by taking another job. So any coach who criticizes a player, I got no respect for that at all. And yeah, um, I, I think it'd be an idiotic move, even if a coach feels that way to, to voice it publicly. I think would be recruiting suicide. But that, that being said, um, you know, I think uh, you know if you're Arkansas, you say, okay, but thanks for all the 
you know, great play, Traylon. You know, we wish you the best of luck in the NFL, and and let's see what uh, you know what what Keaton Jackson can do. You know, he's a young guy that's gotten some playing time, but he's you know he's going to need to step up. Let's see what Bryce Stevens can do. Let's see if Trey Knox can get some more catches as he makes it continues the transition to tight end. So. I would look at this as the first game of the 2022 season. It is, you know, technically going to be, you know, January 1st, 2022, you know, and, and so how, how do these young guys go along? And I think that's what any team should do that has key players opt out is look at it as like, okay, this is a chance for us to see how we're going to be going into next year with, with, with some new guys. They're going to have to step up. I mean, I know they're going to get guys in the transfer portal and recruiting to add to the mix, but right now I think it's a chance for some young guys to get some really quality reps against, you know, a quality program like Penn State. I, I think that's the way everybody ought to look at it. So, I mean, final thought on, on Burks here. And, it, you know, we, I don't want to rank where he sits in Arkansas history and, and all of that sort of stuff. But just, you know, I mean, the, the two words that I think of when, when I think of what we saw from Traylon this year it, is anticipation because you always knew on any, on any moment he might do something amazing. And and dominance, like for to 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 be paid off for that anticipation with incredible plays on a week by week basis, and to be as dominant of a player as he was when opposing defenses knew he was the main option when it came to when it came to KJ throwing the ball. Uh, you know what, what what word would you think of? You know to compare what you saw from Traylon Burks this year. Just just one word, I guess maybe electrifying or dynamic. Um, yeah, you're right. I mean, obviously, defense is game plan to stop him and still struggle to do that. There's very few receivers, I think, in college football, and certainly at Arkansas. And Arkansas has had some really good receivers over the years. But, um, you know, he's just such a great combination of size and strength and and speed. And, uh, you know, I don't know how his hands measure. I know that he's at the combine, but, you know, great hands, just the ability to go up and get those 50 50 balls and. You know, I think the last impression I'll have him at Arkansas is that touchdown pass, however many yards it was against Alabama, where he's just running to the end zone. You see like five Alabama defensive backs, you know, in his wake. And when, you know, Alabama defensive backs can't run you down, that, that means you're pretty good. You know, that, that play, I think he caught the ball about midfield and made a cut, and you see he was gone, you know. And so you think about, you know, how he performed in the SEC against, you know, the best, you know, the best defenses, you know, um, obviously they're great defenses in other leagues too, like Michigan or whoever you want to, you know, you want to name, but, you know, week in and week out, you're facing great defenses in the SEC most of the time. And so, um, yeah, he's definitely one of the best ever at Arkansas. There's, there's no two ways about that. Well, and it seems to me, I mean, he's got the opportunity to have the best professional career of any Razorback wide receiver in the NFL since, Lance Allworth, you know, and I mean, you haven't seen, you know, an Arkansas receiver, a former Razorback in the NFL, like make big waves in a while. And it really does feel like Burks, he's, he's a prototypical NFL receiver, Bob, right? Like he's, he should be a star in that league. He could be. Well, yeah, like you just said, I mean, he's really got all the, all the physical tools you're looking for from the size, speed, um, you know, skill set. And then I think he's a very hard worker, you know, I'm not going to pretend I got get to know these guys really well these days, but um, he seems to, you know, not have any off the field issues that I'm aware of. Mm-hmm. Everybody always speaks highly of him and his, uh, what a great teammate he is, and all these kinds of things. You know, and the NFL is obviously looking at that kind of stuff too. It's not just about you know what you can do physically, but are you accountable, reliable? You know, somebody that the other guys want to play with. And so, yeah, I really think he's got, you know, he's got all the physical. You know, tools, and then he's got all the intangibles to go along with those. Bet Online has you covered for all the holiday season. More props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all sports action. Head to our new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus with the promo code BELIEVE to receive your bonus. That's B L E A V to receive your bonus. And it's not just football. Bet Online has pro and college hoops, NHL, boxing, UFC, even your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all these amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports.